these are all the projects that I have worked on during my three years bachelor program. Um, in total, I've worked on approximately eight, if I remember correctly. So starting off, this is one of the first ones that I probably worked on. Um, and this was for a luxury button company called Bur Burbrand. And uh, what they do is they do uh, buttons B2B for uh, luxury shirts. Um, this one was specifically because they didn't know what to do with the excess of mother of pearl. So um, the CEO of the company had this brilliant idea to take that um, excess and create a cling foam which he could wrap on anything luxurious such as your interior of your yacht, uh, your Ferrari, uh, watches, sunglasses, surfboards, anything as such. And what he wanted us to do is he wanted us to put together a complete business plan as he had no idea what to do in the B2C uh, world. So. Um, we worked on this as an entire course. It was a project management course, if I'm correct. And um, we each worked on different sections. So I was in charge of the uh, marketing research side, where I also looked at what sectors you would probably sell the project to. And um, most likely it would have come into Asia and so on. Um, yes, next one. So. The other project that I worked on, which was super interesting, was um, with Procter & Gamble. What they did was they asked us um, if people would say that the FMCG companies such as Procter & Gamble and Unilever are um, responsible for ocean pollution and so on, or if it was in fact the brands themselves. So the first thing I was um, asked to do was to research if that was possible. So I sent out a ton of surveys, I did a lot of research and came to the conclusion that um, our generation was most likely going to pin them down as a company for, for this issue and therefore they most likely need to look at doing things for it. Um, whereas our parents most likely have no idea where head and shoulders comes from or no idea where their margarine comes from, uh, anything, their shavers. Um, and then I had to put together a couple of recommendations on what they should do. Um, I'm trying to remember this in my first year. Mostly these recommendations were in the field of joining up with projects and getting some volunteers in, some young guys in, going and cleaning up oceans, just doing a lot of social media on that. Because at this point, Greenpeace was um, hitting PNG hard themselves for. Um, little plastic micro balls that are in your face scrubs mm -hmm. like in ole yeah. so all the face scrubs and they were saying that that's like little bits of plastic that sits in the ocean uh, so they were really interested in what they can do so that um, they could better themselves but also that they could market it at the end of the day another company that we worked with is the pasta giant barilla um, so I admire some of these companies because they come here and they're very earnest and they actually ask us like, look, like we need help. What they do is they really like they come here and they're like, okay, so we want to do this. How can we do it? Um, which is, I think, very uh, brave for a lot of these big companies. Um, of course, with free labor too. So what happened was Barilla came and they said, look, so we do this for sustainability and that was mostly based on nutrition. Um, if you know what they do, they do a lot on educating young kids on how to eat, how to eat properly, um, what's a good diet. They teach cooking lessons, they have a cooking school, they have um, Academy Barilla, I think, which is a cooking school. So they said we don't do a lot for the environment, and, but we do a lot for the social side. So this took us to, okay, and they didn't ask us to help them with the environment, they asked us how can we market our social side. And so what they did was they asked us to also, and this comes into pure business realm, is they asked us to um, figure out how Barilla was perceived in our home country. By surveys, by research, where, where does the pasta brand rank according to the rest of the giants depending on where you come from. Um, so we worked on this 
So we each did our own country, so I did South Africa and then I based it along with the other brands. But then what I also did um, was I looked at how the competitors and what they are doing and how they are marketing. And then we gave them recommendations on what they could do to improve their marketing for the nutrition, more socially based yeah. sustainability. The next one that we worked on was with uh, Procter & Gamble again. And this was a um, very in-depth uh, competitor analysis of four companies that they identified as being competitors for sustainability. They might not be direct, so there's two are indirect and two are direct. So I had to benchmark with um, Apple, which is not a, di a direct threat, but they do a lot for sustainability. Um, I had to benchmark with L'Oreal. Okay. I had to also benchmark with Unilever and I had to benchmark with Apple, L'Oreal, Unilever and Ikea, which is again an indirect one, but they do a lot for sustainability. So what we did is we didn't look at the products, we looked at how they market. Um, how do they market sustainability? How do they do green communications? And then we had to give recommendations on what Procter & Gamble is not doing and what they could probably improve on and do better for sustainable marketing. And then Barilla came and they were like, exactly the same. So we want you to do the same thing. So we did the same thing for them where, where we benchmarked how their competitors, but this was a direct competitor, not just an indirect, and how they communicate completely and uh, then what can they do to improve. Um, yeah. Next one that I also worked on was uh, with Acquisti and Sustainability. I think this was the second project that I worked on. Um, what we had to do in this one was we had to analyze two companies in the same sector. So I was given um, fast, no, it wasn't fast food, it was supermarkets. So I had to benchmark um, and then I had to see what these two different supermarkets do for, so I think I did Tesco's and Asda, something British. Like British. And um, I had to research what they each do differently for environmental, for social, for vendor management initiatives. This was trying to find out what they do in their supply chain and who's better and who's not. And then from then learn how we can help companies and kind of put together a, uh, what is it called? There's a very good word, um, best practices kind of form for sustainability, um, especially in supply chain. Now we go on to the very environmental based ones, which, which we've also worked on. So we worked with the African Wildlife Foundation and what we were tasked to do was figure out, um, looking both at Ethiopia and Cameroon, they're growing their economies. They both have um, very good research and documents to say that they want to do it in a sustainable way. So how can they do it in a sustainable way and how can tourism help? Because we know that tourism is a great booster. Um, so how can they bring in green tourism in order to aid their sustainability initiatives so that they expand in a sustainable way? Um, and this was probably the last project that I worked on, um, and this was quite quite a big one too. We worked, so there's two companies we worked with, Altus Impact is a con consultancy, and Oko Forest is this um, great uh, guy from Ghana who has noticed that his homeland in the next couple of years, there was going to be no forest left, and then he realized, well, what is causing the deforestation? It is actually uh, poverty, to put it plain. So how can I bring the people out of poverty so we can stop deforestation? So he thought, okay, well, in Ghana they grow something called a cassava, which is like a potato. Yeah. And it's very hard on the earth. Yeah. So how can we grow it using the best 
technology, the best sustainable technology that's out there. How can we do this so that we can bring people out of poverty? Because countries like Ireland, like Ireland who are, <laughs> it's very strange, they're asking for cassava for Guinness beer. Because cassava is starchy. Yeah. Um, because of climate change and everything, they are running out of crops for the amount of Guinness that they produce. Mm. So they're coming to Africa and asking, well, uh, can we have some of your cassava potatoes for our beer? Which is an interesting. So how can they do it in a way that they could boost this kind of market? So we uh, worked and we also, so we did the research. Then we had to do a simulation of what we think. So we used invest models which is a simulation of where you can literally put um, nitrogen, you can put all like all the chemicals and say, okay, well, if we grow it like this, if we grow it with agroforestry, this happens. If we do this, this happens. And we did this all in order so that Oka Forest could go to their investors with all the research and say, um, this is what I've come up with and can I have the funding? Because that's all that they needed was the funding. Then uh, we submitted our paper to the Natural Capital Coalition, um, and I think the paper is outside there. From uh, yeah, from cassava to beer is what it's called. And uh, yes, yeah, so we submitted it to Natural Capital Coalition, and it got submitted at their first launch. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah.